Hi, everyone. Happy to see you back. Now my colleagues are speaking about the action of Paris Habitat in matter of sustainable development and ecological transition. We have planned a brief presentation of our ecological transition policy first, then a presentation of two innovative programs we develop. One dedicated to recover the heat produced by the tube, the underground public transport, and a second about our material reuse strategy in a circular economy way. Let them talk. Hello everybody, I'm Isabelle Quiamont. I'm at the head of the Sustainable Housing Department for Paris Habitat. I'm very glad to be here with you today uh, in quite a sustainable way indeed, because uh, right now I'm talking from Paris. So I'm going to talk about our sustainable strategy. Um, Paris Habitat has been committing for an ambitious sustainable development for several years now as we signed our own Sustainable Development Charter in 2005. As you know, as a public office, Paris Habitat is related to the Paris City Council and its climate plan, so on. All the construction and regeneration projects are developed in accordance with this climate plan since 2007. The city uh, fi is help us, helps us uh, financially uh, for that. Two years ago, we reinforced our commitment by signing the Paris Climate Action Charter in order to contribute to the post-carbon city by 2050. Uh, for that, we, our commitments have to meet nine of the seven United Sustainable Development Goals, and I will talk about that later on. We also signed several charters in order to develop bio and geo-based uh, materials, urban agriculture, development of green areas, materials reusing, and develop the wood sector. Atlas Paris Habitat is the first social housing company certified for its energy management system. To manage this challenge and to include Paris Habitat heritage in a post-carbon city, we need to, to adapt the requirements to the different types of buildings and be innovative in the way of doing and the way of building. We need to use low carbon materials, such as bio materials, as I said, reuse components, improve green energy. We have to exploit local energy resources, such as geothermal energy, solar panels, transformation of heat sources from industrial production, etc., etc. I will talk later on. We have to develop green areas, dewaterproof the soils, optimize spaces, use optimize space use for tenants and neighbors, such as sharing green areas, adapting spaces to the needs of the tenants. But doing so, we have also to take into account the diversity of heritage from the beginning of 20th century to our days and take care of the fragility of our tenants. Our investments go from global renovation to punctual actions. For example, the HBM building in red bricks which are totally obsolete in terms of habitability, but with intrinsic values, need heavy renovation in empty dwellings with thermal and acoustic insulation, ventilation improvement, plumbing, reorganization of dwellings, site projects with tenants. While the post Second World War buildings, whose main issues are thermal insulation and acoustic, thermal summer with the challenge of asbestos point out a real obsolescence and ask the question of their demolition. The 1960s and 1970s buildings are large urban complexes made of prefabricated panels. Their main challenges are thermal improvement, winter and summer, greening terrace roofs as bethos. But it is also how to improve attractiveness and service qualities, demineralize the external surfaces, improve the way rainwater management and collect. And at last, the last 20 years, housing development meet already sustainable development and energy efficiency standards. So only sustainable maintenance is needed to maintain the quality of the dwellings. In terms of energy efficiency, the energy consumption of Paris Habitat housing stock, we talk about 125,000 dwellings, is, as you can see on the schedule, 
half of the groups are labeled A, B, C, and the other half is in label D, but closer to 150. That is not so much. However, energy challenge is in the existing stock, as we have a restrictive urban context for new constructions, and as we have a diverse ancient heritage mostly built before 1948. What kind of actions based on the SDGs, our actions tend to integrate climate plan goals into Paris Habitat's energy policy, and our goals for 2030 are reduce consumption by 35% with bioclimatic designs and actions of commissioning, for example, reduce carbon footprint by 44% by developing thermal renovation, and by giving second life to the buildings as an alternative to the demolition. And of course, we need to increase renewable energy. To develop low carbon, we work on the resilience of buildings and fresh areas, adaptation and mitigation to climate change. We work on the summer comfort, which is right now a real concern for our tenants. We work on the reversibility and flexibility of the building at the conception and try to optimize rainwater management by maximizing permeable surfaces, as you can see on the pictures. To encourage water management and the biodiversity, we try to demineralize and develop green areas. You can see here, for example, grass pavage in the gardens. We also develop urban agriculture projects on buildings, on the roofs, our, on, on the roofs of our buildings, on the walls. Here, for example, you can see a saffron cultivation and uh, we, uh, with beekeeping, we developed shared gardens for tenants. Our gardeners have an ecological management of the gardens with water recovery systems, choice of resilient plants, and no pesticides. At last, we try to encourage local and low carbon sectors, such as bio-based materials, wood and hemp, for example, that you can see on the pictures, but also cork or wood wool for thermal insulation, especially in internal, in, inside the, the dwellings. No more demolition, but second life for the structure and the materials. We try to improve green energy by the choice of materials. We limit the need to excavate the land and develop it as close as possible to the operation according to the quality of the land. And we maximize the use of materials that are little or not transformed or biosourced or derived from reuse or recycling and coming from local sources. We adopt construction methods that minimize the use of water in dry periods. To illustrate some of those commitments and actions, I will give the voice to my colleagues, Geneviève and Juliette, who will focus on two innovative projects in accordance to two of the SDGs, affordable and clean energy, and responsible consumption and production. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, good morning, my name is Geneviève Vito. I work at Paris Habitat in the Sustainable Housing Department on climate and energy efficiency. And today I would like to present the Bobo project where some heat was recovered from the tube in order to heat up the building above. Um, this building is a typical Parisian building as you can see on the photo. For those um, of you who have been to Paris, it's located close to the Bobo Modern Art Museum in the center of Paris as you can see on the map. This building is built around 1930. It's seven levels high. It has been managed by Paris Habitat since 2009 and it was housing offices on a surface of about 1300 square meters. So an extensive renovation was carried out for this building in order to transform it into 20 flats and a shop on the ground floor. As you can see, we went back to the bare structure. One photo shows the floor um, open before it's been replaced and the facade all open up before the windows uh, were put back. And this work was an opportunity to improve the energy efficiency of the building in order to reduce the heating need. Thus, uh, walls and roof were insulated, all the windows were replaced, a new system ventilation was installed, and the space heating and hot water pollution was renovated. And once we reduced the um, heating need, 
it's important to go further and try to use some renewable energy. So that was the aim for this project. And altogether, the energy consumption um, is reduced from 240 kilowatt-hour per square meter per year to 80 kilowatt-hour per square meter per year. So which um, renewable energy was used in this building? When my colleagues in charge of the project went to visit the building early on, they discovered that an underground staircase um, directly connects the building to the tube tunnel, as you can see on the cross section. And also the photo showed that at the bottom of the stairs, there is a door and the door leads to the tube track. So the tube is going past us behind this door. The temperature of the air in this tube tunnel was also measured, and we discovered that it was 10 degrees above the exterior temperature, which is a great source of energy. So this project was an amazing opportunity to recover the tube heat in order to provide, um, provide space heating for the building. Uh, to set up this innovative project, it was necessary to sign a partnership between Paris Habitat and the RITP. The RITP is a company in charge of the exploitation of the public transport in Paris and around. So the objective of this partnership was to allow Paris Habitat to extract the air from the tube tunnel. And also some studies were performed in order to assess the technical and economical feasibility of the project. For example, to assess the access to the tube tunnel, to measure the temperature and the dust content of the air, to select an air filtration system because the dust content in the tube is quite high, and also to evaluate the air flow modification in the tunnel, tunnel when the tube goes past because it could create an overpressure. So the technical solution selected is an air to water heat pump. As you can see on the drawing below, the air from the tube is sucked up into the heat pump unit, which produces some hot water, which is then distributed to the building in order to produce space heating. So this source of energy is um, not sufficient in order to produce all the heat to the building. So the additional energy comes from the Parisian urban heating network. When we consider the energy balance for the space heating for this building, we can see that the heat pump covers from 30 to more than 40% of the global heat need for the space heating, which is a very, very interesting and encouraging result. So the investment for this heat pump and the air filtration system was about 70,000 euros. And um, we have to notice that for this uh, experimental project, there was no fee charged um, to Paris Habitat to um, recover the air from the tube. So what's the future? Uh, several cities are currently trying to uh, find more opportunities in order to recover the heat from the tube. In Paris, for example, with the extensions of some existing lines and also the creation of some new lines in Nantes or so in France, in London and um, in Madrid. Madrid is also trying to um, recover some heat from uh, the tube when it breaks. So in the future, we hope to see more similar projects. Um, thank you for your attention. I hope um, this innovative project was um, of interest to you. Bye bye. <laughs>
and also uh, wooden cupboards that have been reused on sites. All these reused materials make this operation an emblematic site in terms of circularity. So at Paris Habitat, our goal is to integrate a circular methodology in our asset management and increase the part of reused materials in our operations. In this framework, we joined a European project on circularity and material reusing. So CHARM project means circular housing asset renovation management. It's a project from Interreg Northwest Europe program, financed by the European Regional Development Fund since 2018 and until 2022. It's a project, uh, it's a project led by University of Delft uh, in Holland, and it gathers four social housing companies, including Paris Habitat. So we have partners from England, Holland, Belgium, and France, and other partners on research, communication, uh, such as the European Federation for Living, but also associated partners that have a key role in dissemination and feedback. So the goals of the project is to develop circular economy of building and materials reusing among social housing in Northwestern Europe. So we want to promote the development of circular sectors and stakeholders that are currently emerging. We also want to systematize materials reusing on every housing operations. In this framework, Paris Habitat as a partner has different mission. So we want to experiment materials reusing on demonstration sites from renovation to new construction. We also want to experiment material reusing on refurbishment of dwellings before rental. And the goal is also to structure a circular strategy on material reusing. So it's through uh, specification documents adapted to circularity. We also want to develop a material exchange platform for Paris Habitat to facilitate reusing opportunities. About the development of the platform, so Paris Habitat already has an internal material exchange platform called Ecosystem. It's been created in 2016 to exchange materials among Paris Habitat different operations, but it's not really used anymore for a few practical reasons. Within Charm Project, the goal is to develop the accessibility and the functionalities to create a new platform, more ergonomic and with more functionalities. How it will work? To start on the platform, we explore the possibility to exchange the material within Paris Habitat operations. If it's not possible, we send the material to a marketplace who's gonna sell it. If there is no interested buyer, we donate the material to an NGO or to a foundation of our network and which has a social impact. Another mission within Charm Project is to experiment material reusing on a few demonstration sites. So we choose within Paris Habitat housing stock, different types of buildings, such as building from the beginning of the 20th century, typical worker buildings, and building from the 60s. We have five operations from light renovation to deep renovation, which involve demolition and new construction, and also transformation operations. We also have a sample of dwelling that we refurbish before rental, so after a tenant departure. The goal is to have a representative panel of our housing stock and operations to experiment material reusing at different scale and develop a methodology in order to systematize material reusing in every operations. On the picture, uh, you can see the progress of one of our demonstration sites called Stro. Um, on this site, we have, um, we've been reusing wooden landing doors to make uh, kitchen furniture. So one is for the sink and the other one is to hide the water boiler. So the doors have been taken from the site itself. On the same site, we have been re reusing PVC window to make a glass partition wall. This is what we're doing on one of our sites, reusing and transforming, but we also experiment reusing, refurbishing on site, and sending material to be reused on other sites. Thank you for your attention. Here I'm back because it was the last presentation from Paris Habitat. I hope you enjoy all of them as I enjoy all these done before by the other speakers. 
And if you want to get more pieces of information about such a search point, please don't hesitate to contact me by the mail address you can read. Once more, a great thanks and congrats to Seoul Housing for having organized so well this international conference. And I do hope to meet you, all of you, for real, as soon as possible. Kamsan Nida, and keep in touch.